Our job begins where most advisors stop. Saving money is great, but how do you spend it without risk in retirement? Welcome to Every Day is Saturday with Brad Gatto and Matt Stahl, partners and private wealth managers at Fiat Wealth Management. In this podcast, we aim to broaden your knowledge about the financial world we live in today and make the boring and complex financial decisions fun, informative, and educational. Join us on this journey where Brad and Matt will explore different strategies on how to spend your money without guilt and have peace of mind knowing you are spending it the optimal way in retirement. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Every day is Saturday. I am Brad Gatto, and I'm here with my co-host, Matt Stahl. Say hi to everybody, Matt. Hello, everybody. First things first, Matt, how have you been? I've been excellent. I, we had the pleasure to take a trip out to Glacier National Park, oh. which is beautiful and amazing, and I would love to go back someday. <laughs> how about you? Uh, well, you and I talked about this, and I know that, obviously, I know that you went, and I'm very jealous. And so, is that why you brought that up in the podcast? Uh, I was not trying to rub it in. I was <laughs> just try, trying to share a little more of myself and inspire you a little bit. Yeah, there you go. I'm good, man. Thanks for asking. Family, it, we're back in the swing. We had this this weird reprieve for a couple of weeks where no baseball. Yep. And so I would go home after work and just be able to be home. And it almost felt like I was like cheating a system or I know something like that. But uh, now we're in football. So football's back. Youth group on Wednesday nights is back. And so school's back. You know, Minnesota, we... We, we lag everything here to post Labor Day, but now that that's happened, I've had to put, put the white pants away and put the schedule back on. So what are you going to wear every day now? <laughs> uh, anyway, enough, of, uh, enough about that. Uh, we're, we're back again with another wonderful episode, and this one I'm really excited about. I'm excited about a lot of our episodes, but one of the funnest things we get to do, Matt, is we get an opportunity to introduce everybody else to the, the rest of the team, so to speak, here at Fiat, the rest of the family. And today, we have a guest with us, uh, one of the advisors uh, here at Fiat, Scott Airy. Say hey to everybody, Scott. Hey to everybody. Just making sure that we, <laughs> we fit in into your vernacular there. So Scott is, like I said before, one of the advisors uh, here at Fiat, and we're going to spend a little bit of time getting to know Scott today. And so, Scott, before we dive into, you know, Matt and I's questions for you, why don't you just tell all of the listeners a little bit about yourself? Tell them who Scott Airy is. Can I, can I interject real quick? I, I already told Scott this, but I'm expecting this to be <laughs> one of the top two most interesting interviews that we'll have. So not to, not to set any expectations, but here we go. <laughs> my palms are sweating. I mean, of course, behind, of course, behind my interview, right? Like <laughs> that's, the one, right. that's what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, where to start? Um, one of the other advisors on our team here always accuses me of being long winded. So I'm going to try my best to uh, get short and sweet and to the point here. I'm, I'm not from this country. Let me just start with that. I grew up in, in Canada. In fact, I grew up in French speaking Canada of all places. And, uh, Oh, wow. I, Speak some French for us. There, there's, I don't know any French. That's, <laughs> I, uh, my parents used to tell me when I was a child and they would try to teach me how to speak and all those things that parents do when you're an infant. And they'd speak French to me and I'd literally slap them in the face and tell them to talk nice. That's, that's what they told me. So I am, I am the oh, world's you were meant worst, to be an American. Yeah. Though. I'm the world's worst French Canadian. <laughs> I, I grew up, you know, pretty typical, pretty normal uh, life kind of came from, you know, blue collar upbringings. My parents had pretty modest jobs and worked their butts off to give uh, my brother and I, you know, a good lifestyle. And we had a lot of fun, a lot of good memories, did a lot of things. We're together. We're pretty close uh, knit unit. And so family is super important to me, which you could tell by me moving, you know, 1500 miles away to another country, uh, <laughs> but uh, very close to my parents. I, I talk to them regularly. This, this COVID stuff has been very tough on us. We haven't had a chance to uh, really spend much time together recently. And I got uh, two kids at the moment. Um, my daughter, Victoria, four years old, my son, Archie just turned two and we got uh, and a bun in the oven. We got one on the way. And so that has been eating away at my parents quite a bit. My, my kids have literally become different humans since the last time they saw them, but uh, we're working our way through it. Technology has done some pretty amazing things in our world these days, but 
yeah, I, like I said, grew up in, in, in Montreal is where I'm from. Very, like I said, very French speaking populace, but, uh, I grew up in a, in a pretty English community and went to an English school. All my friends were English. Um, and, uh, like I said, the world's worst French Canadian. And to add to that, I didn't really play much hockey either. Um, uh, which <laughs> more, when I tell this to people, they, they look at me like you're, you're lying You're you're full of it. But I, I play just about every sport under the sun. Athletics has been a big, big part of my life and quite frankly, got me to where I am, but kind of gave up the hockey stuff around 11 years old. Apparently I didn't like waking up early either. And that, you know, when, <laughs> when you're young and playing hockey, that's when all the ice time is at 7.00 AM. And so I think my parents just use that as an excuse for them to not get up early, but we won't, that's for a different podcast, but I actually, I spent a lot of my time playing baseball and practicing baseball. It was my first love and my biggest passion. And, um, that's actually what brought me here to the United States. So as far as everything else that went on in my childhood, that was really the biggest part of, of me. And I, uh, I just chased a dream. I really didn't have a plan B. Didn't really love school growing up. Did what I had to, to uh, get good grades and make my way through it as effortlessly and least amount of time as possible. So I could get back out and play with my friends. But uh, I was blessed with the ability to throw a baseball really hard. And uh, that's what got me here to the United States. And you know, I wanted to uh, make a million dollars doing that. And that was the dream I chased. And I ended up in of all places. And I think one of the reasons why I think we get along, uh, why we get along here at, at Fiat is I ended up in the cornfields of Iowa. I, uh, I woke, I woke up one morning, I got in a car, everyone around me spoke French. I woke up. Some people next, call it God's country. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I woke up the next day and the corn stalks were like nine feet tall and I had no idea where I was. And I instantly regretted my decision. Uh, <laughs> well, I woke up in a small town of Boone, Iowa, where I ended up going to uh, the Des Moines area community college for a couple years. And I had a fantastic time. I like it's a I great said, uh, YMC to, YMCA down there in Boone. It, it's not too bad. There's literally not much else going on in Boone. <laughs> it's a couple miles West of Ames which I did not spend a lot of time in. I'm not a big, I don't know if this hurts us or not, but not a big Iowa state fan, I guess, go Hawks. If I can uh, there you go. throw that there out there go. for yep. the boys. Yep. We'll take that. But no, I, I kind of, you know, spent my time in Boone, did what I had to do to try to reach the next level. And, and while I was down there, like I said, I wasn't really focused on the schooling aspect. I was just trying to get to the next level of my baseball career. And uh, unfortunately I got hurt the, my ability to throw baseball and what got me to the U S ultimately, you know, put me in a place where I had to start making a bunch of different decisions, tough decisions, trying to figure out, you know, what that plan B was. And fortunately enough, I wasn't hurt so bad that I, I couldn't play anymore, but it, it kind of started taking away my options and, you know, forcing me down a different direction. And so school became important to me for the first time in a long time and tried um, really hard to get good grades and, Ultimately, that led me to the next level. And I ended up uh, at the University of Northern Iowa. So go Panthers for any of the you and I alumni that are out there listening. Not too oh, many of us, but there, my, four of four there, people my, we connected four with. Five, four five. We, we, we actually lost four <laughs> viewers or, or listeners from, from my, but uh, yeah. We'll I'll tune down the second you said Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> spent some time uh, the, over in Cedar Falls. Um, ended up, you know, meeting my, my now wife, Lauren. That's a crazy story. I don't know if we have time for that, but I think just fate brought us together and, you know, has kind of put me in that position for us to meet and, you know, put me on that path. But uh, yeah, I met her very, I think the first night I was, was in Cedar Falls and oh, we're together going on like 14 plus years now. So very, very glad it all happened the way it did looking back. But like I said, I ended up in Cedar Falls and just tried to keep the dream alive a little bit more and keep my baseball aspirations going. And unfortunately my, my arm just never came back to what it was and kind of lost interest. And, in, you know, the passion that I once had for baseball just kind of fell to the wayside and, you know, spending time with Lauren and figuring out school was just much more important at that point. So I ended up with a master's degree at the end of the day and guy that I used to tell my parents, like C's get degrees, you know, leave me alone about all the studying stuff and <laughs> get there. But, uh, I guess that's the proof. Eventually I 
turn my, my, my energy and, and commitment towards that and end up with a couple expenses, pieces of paper that, um, are in my office. They're not hanging up yet. I've yet to hang them in my office. You can tell how much you value them. That's in the floor. <laughs> I get crap for it all the time, but uh, that's just the way I roll, I suppose. But oh, it's, a C, it's a C effort in displaying. That's that. right. That's that's I, put <laughs> full forth, that's right. I put all my effort forth in the things I care about. But um, another fun fact, I am really bad at hanging things on a wall. If you walk around my house, there's a lot of patch marks and putty all over the place covered up my mistakes of <laughs> things I've been trying to hang over the years. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm really fortunate. I ended up in, in Iowa. I really enjoyed my time there. I met some wonderful people and quite frankly, don't think I'd be where I'm at in life without it. So well, I don't just think, back. you know, just to listen to your story, Scott, I don't think you were ever meant to be Canadian. I don't know how you grow up. I'm not, I wasn't speaking sure. area and you don't speak French. You didn't like hockey you like america's <laughs> favorite pastime of baseball uh right. it all just it was bleeding you here you were, meant you were obviously to meant to be here yeah. favorite, <laughs> favorite, des- favorite dessert is apple pie yeah he just he checks he checks it's, all the boxes it's chocolate cake all the way max i'm not a actually <laughs> okay. not a huge fan of apple pie but yeah, oh, there you like go it. that's that's the canadian like there it. you go yeah <laughs> is chocolate cake canadian I don't know. I doubt it's, it. it's not as I'm American su- as apple pie. I'm so. surprised I haven't gotten an A joke or a, an a boot joke or anything like that out of you guys yet. But we still got lots of time. Well, yet. we're in Minnesota. That's a little. That's yeah. a little too close to home for us. Yeah, it's, uh, right. You know, Matt and I obviously both originally being from Iowa. We didn't used to not have that accent. But I've been told by my family that's still in Iowa that I have adopted it. I don't believe them yet, but they say they say I have it. So I can't really. Yeah. I don't, I don't have an accent. Cause I, again, everyone around me had had the French Canadian thing going on, but every once in a while, and this bugs me to this day, like a certain word will come out of my mouth and everyone will turn and look at me and be like, are you Canadian? No. <laughs> have to own it because like, there's just no denying it. And you know, there's certain things like I used to say process instead of process. Very. very I, I like that. I think that's something stuff like that. Some, uh, that's what I got. Smart. I didn't about, know that was Canadian. I I, I would have guessed. Yeah. UK. Sure. European. May, I don't know. I just, I said process growing up. And so process, I kind of yeah. like that. I'm going to do that. It got bullied out of me. It came to the U S well, all you <laughs> Iowans just picked on me. So bring much it back. To, yeah. <laughs> bring it back. Let's bring go. it back process. So, <laughs> so we got, we got birth to, to college. So how did you, how did you go from Iowa getting a master's to being in the financial services. Yeah. Yeah. Industry. Awesome. Another good question. I think again, I, I've just kind of left a lot of things in my life up to, you know, fate, to be honest, let's just kind of let things happen the way that meant to be, so to speak. And I didn't, I didn't actually go to school, you know, for, for finance. Uh, I spent some time in, in, in business and, you know, got some formal education there, but my master's degree is actually in, in a field called kinesiology. Um, and I have an emphasis in biomechanics. And so kinesiology is the study of, of human movement and biomechanics is really just kind of the, the physics behind all of that. So my background was really heavily focused on, you know, how to make the human body, you know, more efficient, how to make it run faster, jump higher, become more injury resistant. And that all came to light because back in, when I was at you and I, and like I said, kind of searching for plan B and wasn't really focused on the baseball aspirations anymore. I was like in the training room trying to fix my arm so much that I just started learning things and kind of became obsessed with how to fix my own body. And I was like, shoot, I might as well get a degree for doing this. I'm already spending a lot of time and, you know, this other education I'm doing and not really interested in. And so that's what I got my degree in. And I spent early on in my, my professional career training high level athletes. And I guess I was fortunate enough that, you know, when I, in between where I am at now in life and graduating college, there's a lot of logistics involved and trying to figure out marriage with Lauren and going back and forth to Canada. It was kind of a nightmare. It was a weird time in my life, but I I ended up, you know, very fortunately getting connected with, you know, some really good training facilities. And because of my background and, you know, I guess just level of my baseball career, I just knew a lot of high level athletes. I had a lot of friends that were, you know, professional hockey players, professional baseball players, um, some guys that played like in the CFL, 
I don't know how good that is at the end of the day, but it's professional sports nonetheless. D2 college, basically. (laughs) (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) But I was just in the circles of high level athletes. And so I was fortunate enough to, to get connected to those circles. And that led me down some cool pathways. And I was training a lot of, you know, like, you know, NHL caliber players had the fortunate ability to to train some like NHL all-stars and things of that nature. And I was kind of bouncing back and forth between Toronto and Montreal, just trying to make some money and build my career and, and make it all worth the time and energy I put into it. And uh, then ultimately I gave it all up for love. And, uh, <laughs> Lauren. I, uh, yeah, that's it. She has a big influence on me. And, um, I, uh, I didn't know what else to do. I just kind of figured that I could make money anywhere and I could do this job anywhere. And, you know, there's, there's only one Lauren in my life. And so cue the sappy music, I guess. I was going to say here, I thought we were recording a podcast episode and we we're going <laughs> to right, for, <laughs> right. right for a rom-com. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> so I ended up just kind of giving up everything. And I think I had like a couple hundred bucks in my pocket and I, uh, I one day just told everyone I was leaving and moving to America and I'll, I'll make a very long story short. Uh, about a week later, she told me to get the heck out and I had to go back to Canada. <laughs> I was just going to say, we need another man involved for this to be a true rom-com, but there was, yeah. there was none of that. No, there, there was none of that. There was none of that. It was just, uh, you know, we were kids. We were still very young and the whole marriage thing. And it was just really weird. We knew we wanted to be together and it, it didn't really, you know, as far as how to make it work, wasn't really clear to us. We just knew we had to do something. And the timing at that point wasn't right. And she made a decision and sent me packing and probably the best thing that could happen to us. And, you know, in a short period of time later, we, we got our ducks in a row and figured out the whole, you know, legal and visa process. And uh, there's a whole show on TLC kind called 90 day fiance. That's basically my life. You know, we had to go through that whole thing. So if you really want to know, just tune in, we probably could have uh, got on TV and did some, I don't know if they make money or not, but that would have been pretty cool to be on TLC for something like that. But anyways, I ended up here in, in the U S um, a short period after and <laughs> wasn't allowed to work. Like legally the whole immigration process took its time. And before I was allowed to make some money and pay taxes and do all that stuff that um, people that are allowed to legally stay in the country have to do. Uh, It took a while. And so I was just kind of bumming around a little while and trying to keep busy and not be kind of a drain on society. So I, I took the opportunity to go and like, quote unquote, intern, which was a huge step back in my life. It was really weird. Uh, but I just wanted to do stuff with my time. And aside from working like some odds and ends cash jobs to do, do what I could, I ended up interning, I guess, quote unquote, at a, at a facility in the town that we were living in, in Champlin and, uh, just got the opportunity to work some athletes and kind of keep my craft going and stay sharp. And eventually things all kind of worked out from, uh, you know, the legal process and, you know, I'm legit, I'm allowed to be here. I got, got all my papers, so I got nothing to worry about, but, uh, eventually I started working and it just, at the end of the day, wasn't the right fit. It, um, you know, it was a big step backwards and what I was doing previously for the, the few years before that, the people I was working with, uh, you know, at the end of the day, just weren't my people. And, you know, quite frankly, the athletes I was working with were, you know, a lot of high school kids, which was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that aspect, but you know, you go from working with like professional athletes to high school kids, it just wasn't what I was hoping for. And so I was back at a crossroads and kind of needed some, a plan C, I guess, or D, I don't know what we're at at this point, but, uh, I needed, I needed a new path. And, Actually, I was talking to my financial advisor at the time, who um, was a good buddy of mine, college roommate, who got into this career early on. He was in in football, actually played for the Detroit Lions organization and really awesome guy. And I was just asking his opinion one day. I was was hanging out with him and, you know, getting some dinner and just kind of talking over life. And he threw out there like, you'd be really good at this. And I said, sure thing, Austin, like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this is what, what I've done up to this point in my life. And I don't know much about the United States, let alone the financial industry. And he kind of explained to me what it was all about and what he did for a living and what went into to his job. And honestly, I remember going, that sounds cool. And that's really the last I remember talking to him about it. And then I think like 
two days later, when I got back home from visiting him and just hanging out for the weekend, I got a phone call from a recruiter and he was like, Hey, I heard you're interested in this career. And your buddy Austin told me that you wanted to talk more about it. And I said, thanks, Austin. I really appreciate that. But he just mentioned to uh, a guy he was working with kind of that I might be interested. And I said, sure. I'm at a point where I'm open to ideas. I'm open to the next step and never really been shy to take big leaps of faith like that. And just kind of figured if it was meant to come into my life, it was for a reason. And so I uh, basically started in the financial services industry shortly after that and um, did my my testing and got my licensing that's required to start a business. And that's what I did. I was working for a a big box shop. It was uh, an insurance company primarily. And basically they were like, here you go. You're a business owner and you're a financial advisor and good luck. And they started teaching me some things and just kind of got in my way. And during that time I was working still as a, as a trainer. So I'd get up early and I'd train people in the morning and go to work from nine to five, so to speak. And then I'd go back to the gym afterwards and train because I was, you guys know, and as I'm sure, you know, a lot of our listeners understand this is it's a tough industry to, to start in and make it in and, and build a business with. It requires knowing a lot of people and knowing some very intricate details to some very confusing and, and, and tough topics related to finances. And, you know, I was tailor made for it. Canadian kid that knew nobody that had no understanding of the United States financial system that just kind of jumped in head first without thinking through uh, the consequences, so to speak. But here I am, made it work. And so I were, I was with, um, you know, Mutual of Omaha was the company I was with for about five years, was doing pretty good. And, you know, had some partnerships I was working on and they were kind of fizzling out, so to speak, and going one direction and I was going the other. And one of the other advisors uh, on our team just kind of came to me one day and said, I met these guys and you need to come and meet them. And I was like, there's no chance that I can make another wholesale change to my life. I just had my second kid and I was finally getting to a point in in the industry where I was making what I thought was good money and enough to start supporting a family and living out some dreams of what it meant to be an adult and do all that stuff. And they were like, Hey, we're Matt and Brad. This wait a second. Wait a second. I'm, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to okay. it. Okay. I know what you're going to say. I'm getting yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, we're Matt and Brad and we run this, this awesome, you know, shop here, Fiat, but why the heck are you wearing a three piece suit? And why are you matching Danny? <laughs> I'll never forget that day that, that we met. Um, <laughs> it showed up trying to dress to impress was what I was told. And for anyone that knows these guys and how things work here at Fiat, I'm surprised they even still talk to me after that. So, <laughs> But I, I thought it was pretty funny you know, that we uh, randomly showed up wearing the same color three-piece suit and <laughs> it wasn't planned. I just thought it was absolutely hilarious and I'll never live it down with you guys. I know that for a fact. So <laughs> This uh, is true. First impressions are everything, Scott. Yeah. That's what sticks in people's heads, you know? <laughs> That's sure. Sure. But I don't know. Am I getting too long-winded yet? I'm just trying to recap all of the things. There's so many other instances that that led, you know, to this point. And like, I keep saying, I just kind of worry about what's in front of me, try to work towards what's important to me and, you know, follow my goals and just kind of deal with what's, uh, what's right in front of me day to day. And I don't know, somebody else had a plan for me and led us together. And as we've talked about many times behind the scenes, it seemed to have worked out and got us together to this point. So been a lot of fun thus far. So Scott, you and I have a lot of conversations about these kind of things. Yeah. I'd be curious to hear since you, since you joined with Fiat, where do you think you have experienced the most personal growth? Oh man, that's, that's a really good question, Matt. Uh, we talk about a lot of things and, and those, those times together are, are some of the most, you know, valuable conversations I've had in my life. I don't even know if I can answer that in, in one with one definitive answer, to be honest with you. I've, I feel like I've grown so many ways since, since joining the team, but a lot of it's really just come down to understanding who I am as a person. I think ultimately I, I look back and, and Brad, you made a comment jokingly, but like I grew up in a place where I didn't feel like I was supposed to be in, you know, I kind of felt like the black sheep in a lot of ways and I had a lot of amazing friends, you know, like it wasn't like I was, you know, closed off or, you know, antisocial or anything like that. It just, 
it was very clear I wasn't meant to be there and I needed to like get out and, and leave. And so a lot of times growing up, I was just kind of like, like, what am I all about? Like, what do I stand for? And, and who is Scott as a person? I knew what my mission was, was to throw a baseball really hard and make a million dollars. But what I stood for took me a very long time and I'm still working on all of that. But those are the types of things that as I, I reflect back on the places I've been and the, the things I've had the opportunity to be involved with, I, I didn't know what I stood for and really who I was and what I wanted it to all be. And I, I think a lot of that has come to light here being around you guys and you've been pretty major influences on my life. And I, I tell you guys all the time, you know, you're a few years older than me. So I look at you as like older brothers. And, and so it was a lot of just, you know, growth about understanding like who Scott is, what I stand for, you know, what my, my missions in life are and, you know, what my, my purpose is ultimately. And I laugh about it because, I, you know, growing up, one of the, the, the quotes or the sayings that really has stuck with me. And I, and I think will really be one of the definitive meanings in my life is something my dad always said to us was an old, an old Shakespeare quote to thine own self be true. And I was always like, yeah, like <laughs> let's live to that. And here I am talking to Matt Stahl one day and he's like asking me these questions about <laughs> who I am and what I stand for. And I'm like, I'm full of crap. Like I have no idea what, what I am and <laughs> who I am and all of these things. So Oh, there's so many more things. I think I could talk all day about that sort of thing and really have a lot of fun getting into the inner details of, of who Scott is, but uh, that would, that'd be it. Th that those types of topics just from a personal growth perspective, I think has uh, really come to light. Been a rough couple of years. I think in the grand scheme of the world, you know, I've had a couple of babies, which has been a lot of fun, but those that are listening that have young children, it's a lot of work and, if any of you get a chance to meet my children, they have more energy than anyone I've ever met. And so they keep us on our toes. And so just dealing with that and a lot of change in my life has um, made the last couple of years, obviously with, with COVID and everything going on around the world, pretty, pretty crazy. And so it's uh, been very centering and grounding to be around our team and our office. And yeah, I don't, it's, it's changed me in, in so many ways and just very, very grateful for whoever and whatever got us together. Yeah. So after all kind of your experiences in the industry, Scott, what is kind of your favorite part about what you do? Favorite part about being an advisor? Yeah. And uh, we were talking about this the other day, Brad, maybe not directly in, in, in this aspect, but I, I like to think my, you know, as we were talking about my, my greatest strength is in my, is my greatest weakness. And I, I I really like, this is going to sound super cliche. Like I just care a lot, like the people we work with and, and what we do for a living as advisors, you know, when we're talking about the complicated nature of dealing with finances. Most people, I mean, more than that, the vast majority of people were not taught about money. And what we know comes from typically a very small circle of influences you know, our parents will say things and maybe our grandparents were influential or we watched a friend or their family or something, but pretty much we're just kind of left to our own devices and our own, you know, interest in it. And, and for most people, there's not a lot of interest in learning about how money truly works and what we can do with it. It's just kind of like, make it, you know, you have to have it and we all want a lot of it, but no one really knows why or how to make it or what to do with it when they have it. And so when I look back on what is truly meaningful to, you know, what I do day to day and how I work with people. It's really about the coaching aspect. And I think that really kind of comes back into, it brings back into play my, my background and in, in what I was doing prior to this industry is I, I, I joke about it now, but like, I didn't know a whole lot about finances, at least here in, in the grand scheme of how it worked in the United States and the tax code and, you know, the different industries themselves. But when I look back on what I did for a living, I, I analyzed a person, right. Their movement patterns and, you know, asked them questions about what their goals were and what they wanted to accomplish in life. And then really what I did was after analyzing their, their, their movements was figure out where the deficiencies were, like, where, where were they lacking? Where were they susceptible to injury? Like, why couldn't they run faster, jump higher, all of these things. And then I built a plan for them to monitor and, and oversee over time so that they could reach those goals. And then when I sat back and looked at this industry and, you know, a lot of what we were talking about behind the scenes here at Fiat was like, that's what I did. Like, this is who I am as a person is 
I'm, I just feel like I'm good at understanding where people are coming from and, and what they truly want to accomplish. Cause that's what I care about. Like that's what is, is most meaningful and, and enjoyable about for me is just understanding the people on the other side of the table that I'm working with. And then it's doing what I've done all along is, you know, where are you at, where do you want to go and analyzing their scenario and, and figuring out where the deficiencies are and giving them some ways to improve upon their scenario so that they can reach those goals. And so that's, that's been very eye opening to me. And I think when I kind of match the two together and really put the, the apples to apples comparison of who I was and what I've been doing to what we're doing here at Fiat. And it made it very crystal clear to me that that truly is my favorite part. And I like to solve problems. Like I'm a pretty analytical guy in a lot of ways. I like to understand how numbers work and put the pieces together and then just show people how it works and, you know, introduce them to some answers to complicated things. And at the end of the day, just help them along their, their path and their journey. So I have a lot of fun. It just really comes down to the people on the other side of the table for me. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun putting the last piece in the puzzle, right? I mean, when you're, when you get an opportunity to impact somebody's life, whether it's through their physical health through their financial health, yeah. or anything like that. I, I think one of the common themes, at least for us here and, and those of us that are advisors at Fiat and, and probably pretty consistent throughout this industry is, is that we yeah. love this idea of helping people get to somewhere that they either can't get to on their own or don't want to get to on their own. You know, there's probably some nuance around all of that for us, but it's just funny when you, your story and what you just told and Matt being an engineer and kind of by trade and, and kind of, this whole idea or concept of being able to put that puzzle together yeah. as an engineer. And then my background in ministry and this idea of kind of helping people in their life, find their faith. It's all very similar to what we do now, although in a lot of ways, very different. Absolutely. Brad, do we have time for a couple of rap rapid fire questions? Yeah. Let's do a couple of rapid fire questions before you wrap it up. I'm gonna... I'll let you, uh, I'll let you lead. All right, Scott, just how fast could you throw a baseball? Uh, I was able to, to kind of touch the 93, 94 mile per hour mark. Oh. I wasn't there, you know, consistently right around 90 miles per hour is usually before I got hurt. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe like 78 by the time it was all said and done, something like that. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, you said you've got a bun in the oven. When is baby number three due? Yeah, it's uh, January. In fact, I, I believe I could be off. I think the due date's on my wife's birthday. Oh, cool. So we're expecting middle of January and 17th or 18th. And um, we're going to name it Janu <laughs> for cool. January for anyone that can yeah. piece that one together. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that make life easier for you or harder for you if it's born on your wife's birthday? So much easier. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, those dates and things like that, I struggle with. Um, so if I have one last birthday to remember, then that's, that's good. Good for nice. me. I have one last question. We tell you that we're going to pay for a trip for you and Lauren to go somewhere. Where are you guys going? Switzerland. Hmm. Oh, cool. You going to tell your joke here, Matt? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, the best part about living in Switzerland, Scott. Oh, you've said this to me a number of times. I can't remember <laughs> it. I can't remember it. I don't know, but the flag's a big that's plus. It. That's it. <laughs> we had some well, good dad jokes going around this morning. That was, uh, yeah. that was fun. That was fun. A lot of dads in the office. Last question. If you had your last meal, what would you pick? Ooh. Man, should I say Putin for all my yeah, French Canadians out that's there? What I was expecting. That's <laughs> oh what I was man, no, you guys won't like this because you've you've told me this in the past. But I probably have all I can eat sushi. Well, I love sushi. I just yeah, don't like the concept of sushi. all you can eat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I just I can't I can't warrant the expense of going to eat good quality sushi with the amount of sushi I'd have to eat. It's just, it's going to cost me $300 for that bill. So <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would, at this point today, my, my answer might change, but um, I love me some sushi and I would eat as much as I could before I died. Okay. I, I know I said that was the last question, but as we wrap up, Scott, I do have one more <laughs> as when you think forward from today forward and the idea or thought that perspective families that, that you want to work with uh, or partner with down the line might listen to this to figure out a little bit more about Scott. Is there anything that you want to tell them that, that we didn't get out in this podcast already? 
Oh man. I, I, you know, I mentioned before, like, like family's super important to me. And, and what's oddly enough is I come from a really small family. In fact, and we even went through a period of time where we were rifting and I didn't see my cousins or my aunts or uncles for, for a, I mean, a number of years. And so I look back on that experience and, you know, to me, family is super, super important. And, and for those out there that have, you know, big families or, or share that sentiment, there's a lot to think about when it comes to, to the financial planning components and, you know, how to build generational wealth and, and pass it to, you know, the people and the places that are most meaningful. Like that, that's a big part of what I, what I stand for in my career and what I, what I strive to become as, as an advisor is, is helping those families that are, are really intentional on making their family a big part of their plans and sharing their wealth and sharing their money, you know, with those that are important so that ultimately they can create some good experiences. And maybe it's because I didn't have a lot of that growing up that there was a big disconnect between, you know, my family members, but that that's what I want. I mean, that's what I'm trying to build with myself. And I don't know if we're done at three kids. I want, I just love them. I, like I want as big of a family as I possibly can have. And I want as many people around me as I possibly can. Cause at the end of the day, all I really want to do at any given moment is what I want with who I want, where I want. And at this point, I want to be in Switzerland with my family playing golf, you know, like that just seems like <laughs> eating sushi, you know, like the most un-Canadian awesome? answer yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I, you know, moving forward, I, I want to be around those people that, you know, you don't have to like golf or sushi or any of that stuff, yeah. but, uh, yeah. you know, that truly care about their family and want to do good by, by their wealth and make sure that they're all incorporated. So good stuff, brother. Uh, that's a great place to, uh, that's a great place to leave it. The most un Canadian Canadian we've ever met. Uh, Sounds pretty good. eh? Scott, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Greatly appreciated listening to your story, how you got here. Uh, you've been a wonderful part of the family here at Fiat, and can't see, can't wait, frankly, to see kind of how your business continues to evolve and grow, and uh, the families that you work with and how you care about them. It's just fun to watch. So, thanks for being with us today. As always, everybody, thank you so much for listening in to Every Day Is Saturday. If you want to reach out to us here at Fiat, our website is going to provide you all of the information that you need. And you can find us at www.fiatwm.com. As always, as well, please subscribe to the podcast if you have not done so already so that you do not miss an episode. And we would absolutely love it if you would share it with your friends and your loved ones. I'm Brad Gatto here with my partner again. Matt Stahl. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to let you have it. Uh, we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next Saturday. Thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Fiat Wealth Management or Foundations Investment Advisors. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. 